Welcome to our fight for us. This is a podcast. I am your host tonight. I have our guest tonight is Don Mayanito. She's a health wellness coach who owns her own business. How are you doing, Don? Hello. I'm doing good. Can you tell us about yourself and your business and where you're from? Sure. Uh, my name is Don Mayanito. I am half San Carlos Apache, half Navajo from the Fort Defiance, Arizona, Navajo Nation area. Um, I am CEO and founder of Manuelito Health and Wellness Systems, and my passion is to help our Native Indigenous communities uh, learn healthier lifestyles, but also learning from our historical food trauma and the food systems that we faced over the years, generational trauma in the area of diet and gut health. When you do this business, are you always so serious like this, or do you, or is this how you talk in your class? <laughs> Well, I i didn't know if I was coming for the comedy show or if I was coming on to just speak about gut health and your itchy and your bit and your, your heart that you have on the side. Which which is it? What, what would you like me to go over? Um, hmm. To answer your question, no, I'm not always this serious. Actually, that's what, um, you know, natives, we, we talk... And we have this humor, this sense mm. of humor about us, right? Right. And so when we bring humor to the table, it really releases the, kind of the, maybe the fear of the unknown. And in my classes, you know, we talk about health and wellness and a lot of people don't really, because of what we face in our communities, we don't, you know, we don't want to hear any more bad news about our health, right? Right. And so it's easier to be humorous mm -hmm. and add that humor to the classes because then that way it's not it's not serious. Right. So in my classes, I do use those terms like, <laughs> what, mm -hmm. what are your guts, right? Because that's what I right. talk about. <laughs> it, it just seems like if you make a joke, it kind of puts everyone's guard down, right? It does. It really does. It breaks the, that barrier. Mm -hmm. And being Native, um, it helps relate to what, you know, growing up on the res, you know, we have foods that we're, we've known to love and enjoy and it tastes delicious, right? Right. But nowadays with um, the rising health issues and health risks of um, type 2 diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and coronary heart disease, uh High, high cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, obesity, overweight, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, just fatigue, even just fatigues. These are like, I call them their check engine lights. Right. And so I relate a lot to our vehicles mm -hmm. in my classes as well. So these high rises in health issues and health risks have become where they're unmanageable now. And we're becoming more dependent on Western medicine to to take care of us. But when we think about Indian healthcare and our actual health and wellness, I feel like we have a lack of access to healthcare. But I mean, just the list can go on and on about it. But yeah. Well, it, it's kind of like uh, we eat way worse than the non-natives do right like they eat more healthier than we do but they're the ones that introduce all the food that we eat you think do you think like that oh i completely believe in that um i believe in first contact right that's where it mm -hmm. all begins you know we can go back to 1492 because prior mm -hmm. to that our people didn't face health issues health you know like diseases and such mm -hmm. right right and so we can I, I strongly believe in that and the way the food system has detoured our health to sicknesses and illnesses over shoot that was what 531 years ago from point of contact of you know when they came they started coming here right and it's only been 155 years of the treaty signings for our navajo nation mm -hmm. so within the 500 years that's a short amount of time that it's impacted our our lifestyle right because we were removed from our our lands where we had the food sources that we ate and you know we were healthy plus well and the lifestyle was different too right you had to right. hunt for your food you had right. to 
right. forage and harvest and plant. Yeah. So on the Navajo side, is mutton traditional food? Well, okay. So mutton is the general term for sheep, sheep. Right? right? So there's the long, there's the bighorn sheep that were already here, the okay. long-haired sheep, right? Well, the sheep we have now, some of them are, were were imported. Okay. And we we were introduced to that. So I would say no in mm. one sense and another yes in another. Cuz it's probably because in the same in, family almost. The yeah, bighorn yeah, sheep it and was, then the sheep. But like your, our bighorn sheep come from our stories too. Yeah. Like our creation stories, mm-hmm. evolvement as well. Okay. Yeah, cuz I know um you know mutton sheep is traditional food and you know like Apache, there, there's a lot of traditional food that's not really traditional, but since we've had it since we've been on government land, it's traditional mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. We've adopted it mm-hmm. and adjusted to it, but the thing about that is that our generations, no matter who it is, generationally it takes um, years for our bodies to adapt to a food system and that's why I find such um, a desire in knowing about the gut health and how our food is processed in our body Mm -hmm. and then the outcomes of illnesses or we could have healthy individuals too because there there are a, a lot of people that are healthy too and health conscious well for instance when you think about it what about um commodity foods right some of our best memories as kids, I mean, you go in the pantry and you'd be like, there's nothing to eat in here or the fridge, right? right? Because we had lack of access to food. But then grandma or mom or whoever will go in the same kitchen and whip up just a whole buffet of meals from commodity foods. Right. So, so I mean, those things were, the way they prepared it was good, mm-hmm. um, but it wasn't essentially the best for us. Right. When's your marathon? In October 29th. I'm running the Marine Corps Marathon in honor of my grandfather. And you ran this last year, right? Yes, I did. Um, Are you doing anything different dieting-wise this year than you did last year? And do you remember what mile maybe last year that you start to feel it? Or you just ran through the whole thing? Like maybe 12 miles, 13 miles? I definitely learned some lessons on the miles out there. Okay. <laughs> and so I'm not one to really, I'm not a big eater already. Right. Like I don't eat a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and I'm kind of a picky eater. Mm-hmm. So That's what I hear. Um, oh, really? Yeah. You know, rumor gets around <laughs> about my diet. <laughs> I kind of, you know, mm-hmm. modify the menu as well. Yes. And, you know, so here. <laughs> no, can I just eat off the menu? Probably not. Right. What I learned about running the marathon last year is that I need to really intake more calories. Okay. For fuel. But, which is fuel. Yes. Yeah. Food. But what kind of calories Mm -hmm. and i need to consume more nutrient dense calories and possibly a little bit more of my starchy calories Uh the carbs right because i need um the fuel for this because they don't have a ton of fat mass yeah but i don't have a lot of muscle mass either but we need the muscle mass to endure the running for 26.2 miles. So do you think you may be trying to build more muscle this time or are you just doing more of the calorie intake? I'm, I'm also doing um, built muscle building as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm in the gym for strength and endurance training Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sundays are my run days. So it, it's it's fine-tuning those and really building more muscle mass for it okay so yeah. in essential then yes i'll have to in up my intake on not just calories but protein and fats and and carbs too are you gonna try to okay what was your time 
in the marathon last year? Ooh, it was um, 5.38. Are you going to try to beat that this year or are you just running just to run? I'm just trying to finish it and not get diverted, okay? I'm just trying not to get kicked off the course. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're very competitive with yourself, so I'm just asking if you're going to try to you're, if you're going to try to beat no. your own time. Well, actually, I have to disclose a little. We talk about competitiveness. Mm-hmm. So there's the marathon, which is 26.2 miles, right? Right. There's an alternative option that's a 50K, which is 31 miles. Okay. So that might be the, the difference. I might try that. Right. Or try and beat my time for the 26.2. You're right. (laughs) I'm definitely going to go out like that. And so the first time running the marathon, my mindset was wrapped around um, a time frame because I've never ran a full marathon before. Mm -hmm. So I had 22 weeks of training, which was basically 22 weeks of my life. That's it. Right. (laughs) And so um, in that, process I I realized like my mindset was set on finishing but I had to maintain at the minimum a 14 minute mile okay so you're you're pacing yourself I I had to because by (laughs) by my you get there's these stops along the way right and if you are not at a certain point Mm -hmm. by a certain time Right. Then they divert you, meaning they pick you up on a shuttle bus and you don't get to finish the yeah. marathon. And for me, like running in honor of my grandfather, the co talker, mm-hmm. like, yeah, I just got picked up. So <laughs> sorry, <laughs> didn't get to finish. But, you know, that was really my mindset about that. So mm-hmm. I, was, I was nervous about that. But um, around mile 16, 17 mm-hmm. was when I felt okay. I need more fuel. Right. And yeah. that's when I was like, okay, mile 16, 17, that means I have 10 more miles to go. And and I know you're, I know we, we grew up in the same area, so, you know, we, we've all r- ran before, you know, like when we were younger and um, all these 10Ks and in high school. So did you know, like, let's say, maybe mile six or seven you're like maybe i maybe i didn't pace myself right at the beginning or you were okay the whole time until 14. um i was okay Mm -hmm. until i hit about mile 16 through 17. okay and then we get to something called the bridge right um so growing up I thought about that. I, mm-hmm. I really did. I thought about growing up, and I did run cross country right. back then, and um, and uh, along with running for other reasons. Right. Um, but, you know, growing up on the roads, there's yeah. just many reasons why. But being an athlete, I really did think about growing up back home, and what it was really a mental thing. Mm-hmm. It gets to become a mental thing because. I started thinking about ceremony as well. When things got hard, I really went back to ancestors and thinking about ceremony, thinking about prayer, thinking about you know what has helped get get me through life in right. so many different areas. And and I took it to that level out on the on the run too, mm-hmm. and and basically made it like a prayer run as well. Oh, nice. So it wasn't just all the physical. It wasn't just all the nutrition. It because I teach from a wellness wheel Mm -hmm. and the pillars of wellness I teach are, I incorporate is um, mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, nutritional, financial. And so I feel like mindset is everything when you're, when you're out there, because the minute you tell yourself you're tired or you're done, you are, you actually are done because the rest of your body responds to that. And so I just kept thinking about my ancestors. Yeah. And one of the biggest ones was like, you know, they they had look at how many of our people had to do their long walks, right? Right. So I went back to thinking about being a kid and, and running and all that, but then it made me think about family and then obviously ancestors and mm-hmm. purpose. 
so so mainly like if you're like last year when you were running you thought about probably why you were running like you for your grandfather mm -hmm. and make it more of a spiritual run yes but then it turned in not just only for my grandfather it turned into like for all you know that mm -hmm. have served our country right but also for previous to that that fought for our existence mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll put it here thank you for your podcast and and bringing this space for us to have a voice on that and you're it's true you thank know you. fighting for our existence mm -hmm. and um honoring those that made those sacrifices thank you because yeah i just feel like um you know like what you're doing is keeping your your when you were running you were keeping your grandfather's leg legacy going you know like he was in he was a code talker and one of the first code talkers and so i could i could see i mean if i was running like that i would probably you know if i started getting tired i'd be like oh okay i, ran, <laughs> I know i'm running for i better not be tired you know because like our our grandfathers went through a lot more than what we went through and so why mm -hmm. be tired and just try to hurt i mean try to finish this marathon exactly and mm -hmm. then you think about it like they previous to that you know being sixth generation lineage to chief manuelito and mm -hmm. the sacrifices they made they didn't have a choice in the long walk right right it, they it was do or die right mm -hmm. so for us and the generations they prayed for this is why because you know that's why i ran and also on you know that's that's the my navajo side but like on my apache side too you know we we women we go through ceremony right right and that was another spiritual part of my journey on, on this marathon. And, you know, during that time of ceremony, I thought back and I was like, you know what? I can do this. This is nothing. Mm -hmm. four, four hours, five hours is nothing yeah. compared to the four days. <laughs> yeah, what all they the went through. All the preparation for it, the dancing, yeah. the full buckskin, 114 degrees out there, <laughs> no water. You don't get to drink water. Yeah. You know? It, it's funny because like when I it, well I haven't ran in a while but I know when oh, come on. when I you used, run every day right <laughs> <laughs> when I used to run um, my mom used to tell me to pace with somebody ahead of me so like mm -hmm. I would find somebody and I would pace myself with them um, that's one of the tricks that she had no I don't know if it's a trick I just but she told me to do and so. I've always done something like that. Like I, I'll pace whoever is ahead of me and then just try to make sure I see this person all the way through the race. Is that, is there any like thing that you do while you run? When you say that, because I do that until mm -hmm. I catch them yeah. and then I pass them, then I pick another one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one down, another, and then there you go. Yeah. Yes, I'm competitive. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm that. saying. Like for you, like for us, motivation. yeah, like for us, we, yeah, we're doing something, but also we're also competitive too, you know, and like, I, I, for some reason I got to be competitive to get through something like that. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't get, uh, I guess because our parents, you know, we're very competitive when we were young and so oh we competed goodness, yes. in a lot of things. And so my thing is always, well, I'm going to beat this person or I'm going to catch this person or I'm going to pass this person, you know, and so. I think maybe that's why I don't run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's really why. Okay. <laughs> well, mm. getting invited back again this this year has really again set my mind to okay. Well, I already know I can complete it last year, mm -hmm. so you know this year again probably better timing. Uh, reassess my. Um, nutrition mm -hmm. and my also my my time my pace my training my workouts mm -hmm. i mean the other part too you know behind the scenes is like what about your sleep right schedules you know and which i feel like since we set goals for ourselves mm -hmm. then by default our wellness falls into place mm -hmm. Because now I'm focused on like, um, like our, our, like I'm focused on this goal. So I have to eat better, 
I have to exercise. I have to mentally prepare. I have to rest. Hydration. And mm-hmm. right now, try training in the middle of this heat right now. So the training, okay, so the marathon is, is in October, right? Mm-hmm. And it's where? In Washington, D.C. Okay, so what is the weather like there on during that time? I mean, because you're training out here in 110 degree heat. So when you go over there, um, is it easier or is it harder? Well, elevation wise, Mm -hmm. it's about the same, right? But there's humidity Mm -hmm. and it's colder. Okay. Because we're going into October. So October there and October here are two different things. So last year I had to go out and... I had to set a date in September to run 18 miles out there, which I was thankful for because my photographer had a a route for me, Mm -hmm. nine miles out and nine miles back. Okay. And that was my test run. And then when I came back, I was like, okay, if I can do 18, I can do eight more, not a problem. Mm -hmm. But if I hadn't done that and I just went out there, I think it would be a a different outcome. Can you feel that when you go there? You coming from the west, you're going over there. You think maybe, do you go like two days before to get your body ready for that? Or do you just show up like you, you fly in overnight and then the next day you run? You could do two things. You can do the fly, fly the night before, get there and run. That's probably the best scenario. Or I what I chose to do was Tuesday before. Bec- well, because I ran with an organization, we were Blue uh, Run to Remember. And that organization um, honors fallen heroes. And that's why I ran in honor of my grandfather. So I had to fly out earlier to attend the events that they had going on for us. Mm, okay. And so like two, I flew in Tuesday. The race day wasn't until Sunday. Mm-hmm. But we had to do certain events. Like I did the laying of the wreath at Arlington Cemetery in honor of my grandfather. Yeah, We did another event the night before that and then the mornings before that and then early that morning so i actually had to get there and it was it was honestly it was tiring um because you 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 line up and you get started at four o'clock there Mm -hmm. it's still one o'clock here Mm -hmm. it was a three by then the time different changes changes so i was like man this like i kept thinking it's one o'clock back home right and so people that were following me were like, we're going to get up. We're just going to stay up all night. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then you have to dress to, differently. Like, I mean, here you probably. You dress in layers. Yeah. So then, I, so you're a little bit heavier over there in clothing when, when you're running. No? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But I still just wore the leggings I wore and then um, my long sleeve and a t-shirt. But then my hoodie that I wore was one of the layers I, I got let go of. We have to be be mindful too that it's rainy season out there. Mm-hmm. I was just the one time that I was like, just don't rain today. Mm-hmm. You can rain right. after we're done, but just not today. Yeah. So that was that was one of the other things. They because they run rain or shine. It's the Marine Corps marathon. Like right. rain or shine. You're you're running. So I was thankful for that one. What? So, like, with running your own business, how do you make the time to train and then also do your own business? And get sleep. And get sleep. Um, I, I, would, I probably would say that I just forego the sleep and just operate. <laughs> <laughs> um, running my business, uh, running a company, and it's a solo individual company right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's growing really, really fast. So staying on top of a a growing business and um, training is a whole new world this year Mm -hmm. because my business is growing faster this year than it was last year. Mm -hmm. So in, in with my company, I also do speaking engagements for different conferences and Mm -hmm. such. So there's a lot of travel. So while I'm on travel, I have to, schedule my runs and training out on the road as well okay and and then and then the food intake while you're on travel is really really difficult because you can't take your food right i mean you could you can't take your food and then 
hotels you can't prepare like a meal that you want to eat mm-hmm. so when i did the training last year and i went out early we did airbnbs okay so i would have a kitchen to prepare my foods and i had a grocery list of what i was going to eat tuesday wednesday thursday all up until race day hmm. but now when i'm on travel for my company and my business it, it's it's tough it really is yeah I bet it's because then you you when you're here in Arizona you have you have classes and speech and speaking engagement so I guess you would here have. in Arizona yes and um, I'm actually going to start my one of my own personal workshops mm-hmm. but I do I I teach my classes um, Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday but I've recently had to pick up some Mondays and some Fridays when I'm not on travel and then I'm going to start incorporating my own workshops too so oh that's, and when is your workshop going to start my very first workshop is going to be um august 17th and 18th um i'm holding a limited amount of seats okay uh and so um i will be sharing a registration link for that and it's understanding feel for the body workshop it's a three-part session mm-hmm. held in two days and it's it's for everyone or is it for like um women or is it for like a well it's for everybody okay everyone you know um, because because there's a lot like sacred women like like a lot of women healing conferences too so i just thought i'm not you know what you were doing because you said some of that before right i i've done the um i've done many conferences there yes there's the sacred healing conference for women Mm -hmm. i've done um, women empowering women for indigenous nations native american women's conference is coming up in november yeah but this is gonna allow me a space to really just focus on my own workshop and mm-hmm. really pour it's gonna be i keep i'm keeping it smaller because there's so much content yeah. to put into a short amount of time mm-hmm. and so um understanding feel for the body and the digestive system if you've never heard it before Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to hear it a few times right and and i want to leave space for for you know it's a workshop they're gonna they're you know what you get out of it is you're gonna actually participate in everything that i teach so you'll be like cooking and or what will you be teaching with me planning goal goal setting is one of the last um end of the end of the series but previous to that you know we also because fitness also in you know how many times do we go through fitness and not ever get any change or results right or see it um and it's because we don't know what our body type is and how we adapt to food change and fitness change at the same time Mm -hmm. so we 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 go through a, a series of fitness a series of nutrition training all of that a lot of native I say men and more more men probably than women, but don't go to the the doctor and get a blood test or get their blood, you know, get get labs done or check their uh, numbers, you know, like cholesterol and sugar levels. They so I think um, those are one of the things I feel like we need to do more because you know we just don't want to go. Um, if I don't go, I'll be fine. But if I do go, I'm gonna get sick. You know and that kind of thing but i feel like a lot of them should go and get blood work done and get labs done for their you know to see where their levels are at it's a combination of things because working with the stpi grant program um which is the special diabetes program for indians i worked for several different tribes mm-hmm. as a program coordinator so having people a lot of times our native communities both men and women i noticed were hesitant Mm -hmm. you know it's out of sight out of mind if i'm not feeling any way i should be okay Mm -hmm. until like the major check engine light comes on or the engine seizes up right (laughs) then we're like maybe i should go (laughs) and even then there are times and yes guys are more apt to do this is even when you tell them maybe you should just go and they could be like really in a bad situation no i'll be all right no i'll be all right i hear that a lot and then it's like but you're really not so just go check you know yeah it'll go away (laughs) it'll go away yeah it'll be all right um 
but I can't say that for that it's all men because women are like that because I get like that too. Well, so. I, I'm saying it's probably to me it's mostly men than women. I mean the the count you know the the, the statistics probably more men than women that don't go to the doctor. Probably, I would say I would probably agree with that. Okay. Um. Also, like culturally, in some some. And this is where the cultural barriers start to become an issue with our providers in Indian healthcare. Mm -hmm. Is that yes, we can go get a, a blood panel, and but in some cultures, like on my Navajo side, we don't do that because mm -hmm. blood is sacred to us. Right. And if it's tainted or something's wrong with it, then that's that's a bad thing, you mm -hmm. know. So there's some cultures that that's just hard to go. I need to do what with what, and you're going to take that away from me. Mm -hmm. Or even a blood transfusion. You're going to give me your, someone else's blood? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know where, you know. So there's different factors that come into why a lot of people have issues with, you know. Yeah, because what they believe in or the their, their culture or tradition so they don't go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so many factors and, um, but it is a good idea mm -hmm. just to get it checked see where your levels are at and it's it's better to get it checked and catch something sooner than later right. and what i call it is it's easier to manage the prevention mm -hmm. like preventative care mm -hmm. than it is to manage the chaos right the aftercare yeah because some most of them don't go to the doctor until they pass out you know and then you know then they go and then they find out it's it's bad you know and it's like oh you, you would have went a long time ago, maybe we would have found it early, you know, but sometimes they don't go. <laughs> and so, um, no, I mean, I've had clients in fitness that, you know, working in the communities that have come into a full out workout and then they're ready, they're sitting there ready to be dizzy and everything. And I'm like, are you okay? And my mm -hmm. first question is, did you eat or when was the last time you ate? Yeah. Because their sugar levels are dropping, mm -hmm. they're ready to pass out. And I'm like, and sometimes I had someone that for, for a long time, they didn't even tell me they were diabetic. Right. In their health history. And as a, as a fitness instructor, as a wellness coach, those are things we need to know so we don't mm -hmm. harm our, our clients. But, well, that's what I was telling Robert. Like, from what I know from diabetes when I was younger is if you're diabetic, then you got to take the pill, diabetic pill or insulin and drink mm -hmm. diet coke and then that was it i mean I, you. Yeah. You, know, you know what i mean so I, like i was saying to, in the other podcast robert is that i don't think anybody ever really says okay i'm diabetic now i need to change my whole way of eating is no it's if i just take the pill and drink diet coke i can still eat the same i mean i think exactly. that's what everybody's mentality is mm -hmm. and that's you know just lack of understanding mm -hmm. lack of education and that's where i feel like I want to pour into our people and give them the education so that way they can make better choices. Right. And I have to just say hats off and give a big shout out to Robert mm -hmm. because I met him, you know, um, out there at Oak Flat and I just thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is someone that yeah. actually took it to another level and he does really well with his situation and, and, and has become healthier for yeah. it. And is a big, big advocate on helping, you know, our, our people eat better. Mm -hmm. And so maybe one day I'll be able to do a show with him. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. hope so. I hope that, that you know, I really um, ad admire and um, appreciate his passion for how he's changed that. But not a lot of people will do that. Yeah. I mean, a lot. I mean, I know family members, especially in California, that I never seen him do. I mean, they're diabetic. Uh, but I never seen him do what you know Robert does, um, and people that have it, you know, that exercise and change their f way of eating. Um, I've never seen that before, you know. Um, I've all, like I said, I always seen I, I take the insulin and drink the diet coke, and I'm you know I eat whatever. I, so that's how I, <laughs> I've always thought that way until you know I start having family members later on you know, getting diabetic and then seeing them changing their diets, that's when I, that's when I realized, you know, like, oh, shoot, you, you have to change your whole lifestyle when you become diabetic. Right. 
And it's not just diabetes, it's across the board, all health issues. Mm -hmm. I'm um, 11 years remission from cancer. Mm -hmm. So back then, and even then, I was like, oh, I'm diagnosed with cancer, and then turned around and was like, okay, well, it's time to start school. I'm just going to go dive into school, like yeah. that denial phase, you know? Yeah. So I understand that, too. Um, but once I realized, looked on, you know, it, you know, we went through treatments and, and surgery and stuff, and, and thankfully everything's been okay since then, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's also because I had to make that adjustment to make those changes. And I really wasn't eating bad before that. Yeah. You know, or anything, but I also didn't want to take the risks of putting something else that would trigger more cancer. And and how long did it take, you know, with you going through all that treatment, how long do you think it took for you to finally, like your immune system and everything, to finally get back to where it was? Or is it not there, still not there yet, or it's not fully there? I, I feel like, one, um, I had to really focus on my spirituality and men mental state of where I was with, where I was at with cancer. Mm -hmm. But um, one, I accepted it and said, okay, this is what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So I would say it took me about two years to really feel like, okay, I'm, I'm good. Okay. And, and I, but it, it went from like, once you go through that, then you have to go through all, and I do not like going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will be, I'm right there with those people yeah. that don't want to go. And, yeah. but you have to go for a while there. It was okay. After, after things were taken care of, then you have to go every two weeks to get checked. Then you get extended to a month. Every month you get checked. Then you get mm -hmm. extended to quarterly. Then, you know, maybe twice a year, then once a year. And, and once you make those progress steps and stuff, it becomes um, more, you, your confidence is built more that, oh, hey, look, you know, I'm making it through. Right. And then, um, but I always stayed active, mm -hmm. made sure I stayed active, made sure I ate better. Okay. And realized that it can't happen to just, you know, just anybody. Yeah. And, and and that's one thing with di sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's, okay. that's one thing with diseases and sicknesses is there's no discrimination. Mm -hmm. And I think we found that out with COVID. And, and w going back to the cancer, like when people say, well, he's in remission or you're in remission. Um, that's a that's a long period of time of remission, right? Mm -hmm. I am very, very fortunate um, to be one of those that statistically have outlasted. Yeah. And so living my life the way I do mm -hmm. um, is because of that, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, you know, and we both know what cancer can do to our loved ones. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. so seeing that and just being appreciative of every day, you know. And when, when did, what year was that when you had the cancer? I was diagnosed in 2012 and um, went through surgery and treatments in 2013. By 2014, I was um, not cleared. Mm -hmm. My margins were clear, but not mm -hmm. completely clear. So I would say you think that's what made you start your business? Because you what? You, you've been starting your business like 10 years, maybe 11? I went back to school for it, mm -hmm. but I didn't manually to health and wellness systems. Didn't, I didn't start the actual business part until 2019. But I mean, like but, that's where the idea come from, what, what you went yes. through. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, like if you didn't go through something like that, would you, would you have the business today? You know what I mean? I just, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, I kind of would, but the passion wouldn't be the same. Mm hmm. Right. right. Um, my passion for it is is rooted in personal. Yeah. Personal experience, the personal, and then also personally experiencing our loved ones go through health issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of one segment that I did um, speak on for Melanin Stories Matter was when I walked into and and we can understand that you know when we go to funerals, it's not just in a church. Most times, it's in a gymnasium. Right. Right. And so I walked into my uncle's uh, 
funeral and I looked around and a lot of our people are crutches, walkers, Mm -hmm. wheelchairs, you know, just having a hard time. And and some people our age, right? Mm -hmm. My age and younger. And I was thinking, man, this, something's got to change. Yeah. And it, 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 that's one of the spaces where it really hit home that one, advocate for our wellness to be the voice for our wellness and hold um, our healthcare systems accountable to provide that care Mm -hmm. in a way that is conducive to us as Native Indigenous people. Yeah, because I always notice uh, with your health and wellness and like with Robert, it always seems like the background's almost, the background's almost, you had a life-threatening experience Mm -hmm. and changed. And I feel like, you know, most of the stories are like that. That's why I was asking you, like, you know, how that how that business came about. I'm sure it was, you know, because mm-hmm. like, like you said, I I've had family members with cancer, and it's very serious. Like, it's really like, you start to change your lifestyle just by being watching them go through stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, and you know, maybe a lot of people don't see that, and then you try to tell them and change their diets and they don't listen you know and it's just i bet you know just seeing things like that that's why you do what you do oh absolutely 100 mm-hmm. percent. it is why i do what i do because you know taking it back again to our ancestors they mm-hmm. prayed for us right and want us to exist want us to thrive and excel and and be strong right mm-hmm. so i take it back to that and then also one of the things that I always say and remind myself is that in order for significant change to happen, mm-hmm. something significant has to happen. Right. Or else we won't do anything about it. And that could be anything across the board, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did. I chose to go back to school, um, educate myself, and then start helping educate others. Um, in a way that is unique and it's a little <laughs> different because I wear a whole gut suit and yeah. everybody, everybody wants to see it. And then, you right. Know. Well, you know, I know you could go through a lot with your health and wellness and, you know, we could have a whole three hour segment about all this. Is there any other ventures that you're going to get into uh, besides this or anything else that you want to do? I know we had talked about before you starting also starting a podcast. Um, is there anything that your your goal is on that? Yes. Um, so a lot of people know me outside of my business mm-hmm. and outside of, you know, that. And, and once they get to know me, like I do a lot of social media coverage too, right? Right. My Mondays, Warrior Wellness, Wednesdays, What the Flex Fridays. Yes. And I'm getting better at saying that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah. so... Um, you know, and, and it's really just uplifting others and, you know, helping um, others. But there's a side of me a lot of people don't see. And it's the not so serious and the yeah. humorous and, and my red side comes out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, hey, you know, mm-hmm. and they're like, you're even better in person. I was like, oh, thanks. Right. That's a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but really, I like being, you know, just happy and sharing that and one of the things is about love and light Mm -hmm. but also you know i've got a lot going on in my head okay right and i feel like (laughs) like you get that all out right (laughs) i don't know if there's enough time or space in this world i don't even know if um the virtual world has enough time and space from what's in here (laughs) (laughs) um but i feel like this is a space where i can be authentically me Mm -hmm. And speak about like issues that stuff that's just randomly in my head. And when I share this with certain people, even like yourself, you know, it, you're like, y- you'd be pretty interesting. <laughs> like, yeah. <thanks>. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and I value that. I value your opinion, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, your, and your help. So thank you so much for helping me yes, with all of, of this and, and giving me this, um, this space to learn you know Mm -hmm. and so we'll see what happens it it, it's in its growing embryonic stages right so hopefully soon um i think the uh like 
like I want to go video, but um, if sometimes it does feel more comfortable and it's just no video, it's just audio, and I think um, you get get a lot out when you just do audio because nobody's really you know watching feels like it. You're just talking through your head and I don't know going through going just saying whatever. But I feel like um, video is good, but I'm sure you get a lot out just doing straight audio. You know. You know, I'm I'm gonna. That'll be an experience. Mm-hmm. I'll have to get back to you on that one yeah. because um, I do a lot of social media video, yeah. right? Right. And so my presence is social media, video. But then you're right. I think that I could like probably vent a little bit more. But yeah. <laughs> instead of what the flex Friday, it really yeah. would be what the <laughs> like late no. Yeah. But I think that's talking to a lot of our native indigenous women too some of them don't aren't as vocal mm-hmm. i would say right. and so they're like yeah talk about that and just the other night i was talking to my sister um and she and i were going on and we went on like coffee mm-hmm. and then we just went on this tangent about coffee as and that's but that's that's how we are as natives, right? Right. right. We turn something into something, and <laughs> after a while, we're just laughing and yeah. joking about it. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, um, it, I mean, it's it. I'm sure you have a lot to say other than your health and wellness. You know, because we got a lot going on. You know, we got you know a lot of Supreme Court ruling. We got a lot of land and you know uh, water rights, and then our culture and tradition. I'm sure you have a lot other things to talk about or a lot of things you'd like to say other than your business oh absolutely there is so much that i'd you know don't put me in front of a mic and not expect me to say anything (laughs) i mean i was nervous about this you know um so you know it's we'll see we'll see what happens um we'll see what comes out that transpires right i recorded a few things you know i do a lot of traveling with conferences and stuff Mm -hmm. And you know, just giving people updates. So I, I like the mobile, the mobility of it. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I mean, I I might not get any listeners. I don't know. Yeah. You know, but these are going to be like my random thoughts, mm-hmm. or you know, what about the issues? And one of the things I do get is like people think that I have it all together, mm-hmm. or I'm happy all the time. Right. And mm. I feel like sometimes we put that facade on just to help others, mm-hmm. right? Right. And there are times like, no, I'm human mm-hmm. and I have these things that I deal with, right? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, what about, you know, if I had to deal with something that day and it really was something like, okay, he, other people have to deal with it too, right? Right. Or if I just want to randomly have those moments, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know because like for like I had said in one of the podcasts with my cousins, like when I we were talking about like uh, we're very fortunate to have what we have culturally, you know. And my cousin had said on Facebook, you know, some people from the from reservation said, "Oh, you're lucky you guys had that. You didn't have to go through the trauma that we had to." And I was like, "Who said we didn't have to go through trauma? <laughs> yeah, we we you know, we've all went through trauma. I'm just not talking about it. You know, I'm talking about." the privilege we had i'm not talking about that part but yeah like you say like people think oh well don's had it easy this whole time or don's you know you know she doesn't know all the you know the the lifestyle but you do and so oh, the no. podcast will probably you know open up open that up oh i do i'm i'm looking forward yeah. to that part you know that part of like the challenges that we face growing up on the res right mm-hmm. and i don't know about you but the one of them was like I know I'll probably get backlash for this one, <laughs> but for me, um, growing up from two different tribes mm-hmm. and fitting in for one but not fitting in for another, but yet you're still part of tribe and you're still native. Yeah. I, I think there's a term for that. I forget what the new term is. Okay. But there's labels for everything nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm anti label, okay? Because yeah. I'm like, I fit all of them. Forget right. it. I just <laughs> don't categorize mm. me because I'll just mm. go into every section um but i feel like this is where i'll be able to really express those um those parts about me and the trauma yeah but also the great things like you know people think i didn't ever grow up on the res i was like are you kidding me like 
yeah. those were the best moments mm-hmm. and also the hardest times. Right. So I talk about it. I'm like, there was such beauty in all of the messiness that we all go through. Mm-hmm. Right? Just, everybody has that difference. Like, you know, I, I moved, I was on a reservation. I moved to the city for a reason. Um, people move, natives move to the city and move back to the reservation for, for a reason. You know, I mean, it's all, we all have our reasons why we're moved, why we're here, why we're there, you know. And so we all had our different uh, experience, but, you know, we we always go back, you know. Mm-hmm. But. And see, that's another thing that I, I want to express. Uh, I'll probably express that so you have to tune in on that one. Of being <laughs> an urban Indian now and, you know, like, you know, I, I also sit, you know, I don't just do the business part, but mm-hmm. I also encompass like um I started a coalition for the urban um urban indigenous uh food coalition. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, really providing um solutions to access to food for our urban natives here. Another area I wanted to focus on is like native youth that come to the cities and they um they need help right parents are working two Mm -hmm. and three jobs and need help for you know um, sports fees right and and things like that so these are areas i'm thinking about our urban natives that don't get have the resources like everyone thinks we do Mm -hmm. right oh yeah you you know you live off the reservation and like do you know how hard it is like really Mm -hmm. like it's it's not easy right you know and but i'm thankful because there's some parts of my culture that i i do i'm not fluent in my language Mm -hmm. which is something i wish i i was but i can learn i can learn and and i do my best um even though i don't pronounce some things right but Mm -hmm. it's okay (laughs) and you know in my household it was english navajo and apache Mm -hmm. and so sometimes when i'm introducing myself that all comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, I honestly, I'm just me. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to just be me, uh, being more authentically me, working through my trauma, mm-hmm. working through my growth. I feel like this year, these past couple of years have really been starting your own business and owning your own business and projects that you work on has really helped me develop my growth. Right. Personal development and self care is a, one of the uh, places I really promote. Is self care is because we can't take care of others if we don't take care of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so, and that could be in all the different pillars that I teach. Right. Right. So I have to apply it too, but it's not perfect. I talk about progress, not perfection. But, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm human, just like everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, you're right though. It is it is much harder to live in the city than the res. I mean, the reservation um it's easy. Um there's a lot of, you know, things that happen there, but bills wise uh uh you know that is not as it's easier than out here out in the city. Isn't it? Mhm. And then I don't know about you, but People think like, oh, they're doing well. You know, they live out in the city. And it's like, you have no idea. Like, they just got to deal with whether they're going to get someone to run down to the vendors. Back in my day, it was called Pop Stand. So. Oh, no way. You didn't yeah. come up with the Pop Stand. Remember those? <laughs> so that's where you got all your food was the Pop Stand. So. Um, that's just food. You got your candy. Yeah. You your sodas. Get the hookup if you could, but mm-hmm. <laughs> they had to, like this old board with all the stuff on the menu, and sometimes the the <laughs> and then board they just write a line through it. The board was chippy, you know, and I was <laughs> like, oh, they need to get a new board or something. I can't see that, you know. But and then you ask anyway, right? Yeah, you ask any. There's a line through it, but you ask anyway. So that you means you don't have any more. That's what you gonna say. <laughs> exactly. I forgot about those. Those were the mm-hmm. days, though. Yeah, you know. Sorry, <laughs> those yeah. were the days, though. They had a little. Got me too excited about the the pop stands, okay? <laughs> and then they had like a little step too, you know. If you were short, 
you they have a step you step up hey, there hey hey wait a second and you look, hold up i had to have two steps okay mm -hmm. some of us yeah fun yeah. size <laughs> two steps <laughs> yeah. like still kind of like what's over there mm -hmm. can you see no, I mean, hop stands, oh my gosh, yeah. the best. And then don't forget about the snow cones at the different um, dances. Yeah, snow cones. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, can't door dash that. Especially when the snow cones come around someone's trunk. You know what I mean? That's, that's oh, those the, are the best. Yeah, those are the best ones. Yeah, yeah, those are the best. And the syrup. You know, I did get one um, not too long ago. And I actually got to Venmo my money to them. What? Mm -hmm. Are they upgrading to apps? Yeah. No. You know, you, you know like before I say, well, before I go down, I get go to get, get me, cash, give right? me some cash <laughs> just in case, because people can come by with you know rings or necklace or whatever, and I might like it. But um, there, there, there's there some cash apping it. Venmo? Some will cash app it, and some will yeah Venmo it. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know everybody out there now has a phone. So, you know. What about those that are like, hey, can I um, have a couple of dollars? And you're like, no, I don't have any. Well, I have Venmo or Cash App. Can you send it to me? <laughs> <laughs> you can't use the, oh, I don't got any money on me anymore. <laughs> you can't. Dang it. <laughs> We're coming up in the days, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I mean, you just got the, the free phones, too, so. Yeah, that's true. Can have the apps, right? Mm -hmm. Start a business. Yeah, you can start a business. See? It's just a phone. Just a phone. That's all you need is a mm -hmm. phone. And that's why, you know, that's what I was excited about with um, the podcast. Mm -hmm. So it's mobile. So yeah. thanks for those uh, tips. I think you should do, I think you should do um, some training on, on uh, learning how to set up a podcast. <laughs> I, it, it's it's a lot of work because <laughs> it depends <laughs> on what you have. You know, you know, if you got a laptop, if you got an iPad, if you have a, you know, an Android or an iPhone. You know, it's all. I think all what we worked out right now with the phone. Yeah, I'm good. The yeah. only thing is, um, because now, hey, I was Android 100 percent, mm -hmm. little green man. Right. But then the Apple invaded my world. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have any um, guests on your podcast? Or are you just going to go kind of go solo for a little bit? Well, I'll be solo for a minute until I've run out of stuff to talk about. I don't think you will. But <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I, that's why I gave you that door. Just I don't so think you could see that, okay? <laughs> I don't think you can stop talking. But um, <laughs> are, so, so, see? See, my nativeness just came out. I just. <laughs> laughed and threw my head back <laughs> are you gonna try like uh you know like family members or just like business business partners or just whoever i think um well i have talked to a business partner that's actually gonna host um let me host my uh, workshop in her in her business oh great space mm -hmm. so i'm gonna actually you know i think for things like that being um supporting our native communities and their business entities mm-hmm I feel like um, that's a space that I want to make sure I, I get back to. Okay. And so I want to go there and, you know, and promote and do a podcast. Maybe maybe she has some, some interesting stuff to talk about. Oh, good. Everyone to talk about, you know? Yeah. Because everybody has something they want to say. Right. Yeah, you know They're what? just waiting, waiting for someone like me that has a voice that will use it yeah. to say it. Honestly, like, like my relatives and, you know, once I said I had a podcast, they were like, hey, can I get on there? So, you, you mean, you're going to have a lot of people in line for sure. It just depends on if you re if it's relatable to what you want to talk about, you know, because I do. I mean, to everybody would love to get on a podcast and talk, you know, and so um, it just depends on what do you want to talk about at that time? That's where you would have mm -hmm. to pick, you know, but you yeah, you're not going to you're definitely going to have a line of people ready to be on your podcast. Do you think so? Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think because of the different, so many organizations, like like coming back from the retreat in New Mexico, right? Right. I can't wait 
for my solstice sisters to to catch wind of the, even this podcast, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and all of them are involved in different things, and they all have a voice, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm sure they'd be interested as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think I think it, and then it's also surprising too for once you start your podcast. Like for me, I never thought um, my thoughts of culture or you know um, issues would would um, be interesting to a lot of people. And, it's, you know, there's a lot of people that think like you and me. And then those are the ones that will listen, you know. So it's pretty surprising sometimes. Well, I mean, in your platform, too, and everything that you, you know, you have people come on and let them share. Right. Right. And I like that. But mm-hmm. then you also have those questions, and I'm waiting for mine. Um <laughs> <laughs> like those on the spot questions yeah. and I'm like I know you I just know you <laughs> and you know but um you give them that space and then and then you always come back with something that you know would possibly be challenging right mm-hmm. right I like that so what what do you think any challenges you're going to face with this podcast you think you would hit or um, like a wall or maybe you just I don't know I haven't really thought about it mm. see and I think you know this about me yeah. I'll start something and then think about those challenges later yeah. when they go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think one of the biggest challenges would be um, you know just the controversial stuff mm-hmm. what I think might not be agreeable to everybody right right you know, not everybody's going to think the way I do. Mm-hmm. But there are some that do, and they don't get to say what they need to say. Right. And so it's not a matter of really like, okay, well, I'm not catering to those that don't like what I have to say. You know, if that's the case, then just don't listen. Yeah, and also I think it's because, you know, we're, our, at our age, we're in the middle of youth and elders right so like i try to keep that like connection you know like i'm i understand what the youth is trying to say i understand what the elders are trying to say you know and i feel like sometimes at our age we're kind of right in the middle of everything right now you know we've Mm -hmm. learned from our grandfathers and our grandmothers and our parents and then here comes the youth you know with a different way of thinking and so then we try to make sure, like for me, I try to make sure I relate also because I have a lot of nieces and nephews, you know, mm-hmm. 16, 17, 18, 19, all grow up in the social media world. So then, yeah. you know, I'm dealing with that and then I felt, you know, make sure I'm not stepping on anybody's, any elder's toes at the same time. So I felt like, you know, like us, we're right in the middle of the changes. The change that's going on right now, we're in the middle of it. Well, I think every generation has its influences, right? Mm-hmm. And right now, the generation that our nieces, nephews, and okay, is all the the internet yeah. um, influence, right? Mm-hmm. We had a little bit of it. We were introduced to it, right? Mm-hmm. And then we have our elders. And so we had the influence of like what? Um, music right. is one of them, right? Mm-hmm. We had the influence of music and I think like for school and sports and, you know, being physically involved, Mm -hmm. socially involved, whereas nowadays kids don't. And then elders, they had the cultural, more of the cultural involvement. Right. Right. And so I think you're, you're right. Every, every area, every generation has their influences Mm -hmm. and, but sticking to still evolving, but remembering where we come from and our identity. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, how, how do we do that, right? Right. Um, thinking about your questions, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and that, I think, you're right. Like, I didn't ever think about, like, youth. I was just thinking about, okay, I'm just going to ramble on about stuff. Yeah. <laughs> See where it goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, I'll say some stuff, and which the youth don't understand, right? And so I have to make sure that I level it out because... You know, the youth can also think of you as, like I was saying before, like an old head, a gatekeeper, you know, something like that. 
Uh, so you can even get labeled like that if you're not careful. And then you got the elders who, you know, say, put it on you to make sure that the youth don't disrespect their culture. So I can't be like the cool one. Yeah. I can't. I'm not always going to be the cool person. Mm-hmm. And I'm not always going to be the <sighs> ideal. Yeah. Jeez. Thanks for busting my bubble there. Okay? Yeah. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, because, you know, like for us, like our grandfather were born in an era where they weren't even citizens yet, right? So um, it's not that far away, you know, for us either, you know, and especially for our parents. I mean, their their great grandfathers were, you know, born um, when where there's no reservations. So, mm-hmm. um, so now with the youth coming in, Right there, mm-hmm. you know, like my kids, you know, like I would, you know, they're born in the new, in the 2000s. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you know, um, trying to keep that, keep the youth and then also trying to keep it in line with the elders is, is a lot of work, I think. I mean, well, again, here we go with mm-hmm. it, adapting it, adjusting into two worlds, right? Right living and and then that's one of the perspectives that I want to give as a native indigenous woman and I I say that in my introduction is living in these different worlds that we have to live in because again our elders are about the culture and about our way of life and Mm -hmm. honoring those sacred areas right Mm -hmm. and then we have the youth where it's all technology and and that influence and so so we know both and yeah it is hard it's yeah. tough to <laughs> kind of okay who am i today am i mm-hmm. gonna hang out with the elders today or am i gonna hang out with the youth today yeah. you know what what energy do i have for that yeah <laughs> right because you could say like an old term that the elders use and then the youth be like what'd you say you know what i mean so it's kind of like okay you know, make sure i'm I really see. surprised like <laughs> what i was surprised about is there must be some kind of retro thing going on out mm. there because my son, he's 16 and he had mentioned, so he was, I forgot what it was, like Pat Benatar or something. Oh yeah. Playing mm-hmm. and he was singing. I was like, like, where did you hear that from? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know this song? <laughs> uh. And he was just laughing and, you know, but I'm sure they, they cut, cut, like, are around that environment at some mm-hmm. point because of the internet, right? Right. And then the other thing too is, you know what? I should have saved all my like concert shirts. Mm-hmm. Right, because they're all about are, concert shirts right now. I know, and like those retro shirts, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm like, dang, there's they're paying mega bucks for you shirts. Mm-hmm. Like, nope. are you serious? I had a. a I cleaned my closet one time and I had a bunch of wrestling shirts because I was into WWF, WWE. And before I took them to Goodwill, I gave them to my kids and said, hey, you guys want any of this stuff? Because I'm going to toss it. And they, even my nephews were all trying to grab the wrestling shirts. So then they checked online and like some the shirts that my daughter kept, like Undertaker and them, they were they were worth a lot of money. And I was like, oh, yeah. man. Like, um, I didn't want to be, you know, can I have it back? <laughs> but, yeah, they're into that. You know I'm going to start a business now. Can I have yeah. it back? <laughs> yeah. your college fund now. Can <laughs> I have it back? <laughs> yeah, but they're... You think about, well, what about the sneakerheads? Yeah, my, my son is a big sneakerhead, so... Like, yeah. are you kidding me? And now yeah. I feel like I'm not wearing the right sneakers, you know, because he's like, hey, you're not <laughs> supposed to wear those sneakers with those pants or this, oh God, you know, like what happened? Like I thought I was in, I was in, but I'm not. It's like, no, you're not. <laughs> no, dad, you're not, you got, you're wearing the wrong, wrong ensemble, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, nowadays you can wear your pajama bottoms to, to school. Right. Yeah. No, and, and, not- and all black, all black shoes is not very popular. I mean, he's like, you gotta have some white stripe in there or something, you know, that's I back. Know. Back in my day, you know, when Michael Jordan wore all black shoes, it was cool, you know, and so. Yeah, it's not. You, well, we wore what Michael Jordan wore, right? <laughs> right. It didn't matter what it was. <laughs> the Adidas, you know. Yeah. Let's go there. Mm-hmm. I swear, you know, there's 
just so much. And you're right. We have to bounce back and forth. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it just, you know, like when I go to a ceremony, you know, I there's two things. I hang with the youth and then later on I hang with the elders, you mm-hmm. know, and so uh, that's why I try to keep the balance, you know, and understanding of, of, you know, when my kids say things about, you know, or ask questions, you know, I just try to make them understand and what I know, but um, I always tell them, like, you guys could come up with your own, you know, conclusion of how you feel about it, but um, then, you know, the elders, they, they ask you questions about the youth, and so you have to tell the elders about the youth, and so, um, I mean, I like it, I, I really do, but it's just, uh, it's a lot of work, because like I said, again, we're we're in between the youth and the elders right now, you know, our, our generation right now. Never really looked at it that way, mm-hmm. but you're right, you're right, and no wonder we're almost batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Because we, we, know, we <laughs> know the old way and we know the yeah. new way. You know what I mean? So um, you, st- you do get some youth that know the way. But oh, yeah. the way of thinking today is a lot different. You know, um, the way di- the way kids are disciplined is different. Um, oh, geez. Don't yeah. Get me so started. I'm just saying, like, um, you know, today they want the kids just to be kids until they get older you know and so um yeah i mean the same the times change so then they understand but you know we're the ones that have to keep it in balance because again we got the elders and then we have the youth well elders would be like why are they acting like that yeah. they shouldn't be acting that way right mm-hmm. and then you're like well they're trying to be kids yeah and then you have cultural sensitivity yeah you know and the emotional sensitivity and the, all these sensitivities and you're like, okay. Mm-hmm. And then what do you tell the elder, right? Right. <laughs> but you know, the, the the youth do understand, I know a lot of the youth do understand the, like the land, like fighting for land and water. I know they know that a lot more than, you know, kids older than them are adults, like maybe in their 20s or 30s. I know mm-hmm. the younger generation know a lot about rights and um the movement the movement yeah but not you know more than some maybe in their 30s or 20s mm-hmm. but yeah i know that the youth really out into that you know in that area because then they help with also their social they know how to help with social media mm-hmm. you know they help the elders with like hey we could put this on social media you could do this you could do that you know and to help fighting for these sacred land and water so i mean they they do help i'm just saying like we're all growing in different generations and different times, so you know we just mm-hmm. we have the same idea, I guess, or same beliefs. It's just we got to keep the balance of the elders and the youth, mm-hmm. right? And, and I think it has to boil down to respecting all, mm-hmm. respecting everybody, you know, and each other. And and I feel like the youth, um, man, they cut, they're coming up with some really simple concepts. Mm-hmm. You know, I think. I know for myself, overthinking everything and then thinking myself right out of it because I feel like oh, that's just a little frustrating. Right. Whereas they just, they see the simplicity in it mm-hmm. and it just makes sense and they, they, they fulfill whatever task or whatever they have to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like you said, they find the power that they fit in in some of these movements mm-hmm. and that, that they help out. Mm-hmm. You know, And I feel like they're, they're, that generation is going to be the next generation of major movement yeah not just like they're right now we're bringing awareness to it but they're like okay well what are we gonna do about it right because there's the you know did you have you been following the the kids that are suing montana yes yeah see that mm-hmm. they're, they're not just talking about it. they're like well this is our human right right and there's some and, there's some high school kids that are fighting for oak flat you know, they got a group together, they're fighting to yeah. help, you yeah. know, and so, and then I was going to say, like, especially like what we're doing, right? So, my son helped me, if you get this camera, if you get this microphone, if you, you could do this, and then your son's back back there in, a, in a, behind the scenes saying, mom, use this microphone, put these ear pods on, you know, like, yeah. so again, they help us create what we're doing now, 
in certain mm-hmm. areas, you know, and so and then so like I like I'm saying they're all we're all in it together, it's just different timing, you know, different times that we've grown up in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I just feel like, you know, it gives me hope. Mhm. That, you know, our, our future and our generations, our future leaders, these are our future leaders, mm-hmm. you know, that we're pouring into. And um, I feel like, you know, again, like I said, it's just it's providing that hope that we're good. Right. We're going to be OK, you know, <laughs> keep teaching and passing it on. I don't know if I'm good or if I'll survive. <laughs> <but> they will <laughs> be good. That's what matters. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, I think, you know. Um, business podcasts. If you asked me 2010, 2009, while I was going through some hiatus, mm-hmm. which you'll have to tune into the podcast about that one. Right. <laughs> but if you asked me in 12 years, what would you, where would you be at? This is not, I don't think I would have. Right. Said, oh yeah, I'm going to be this public speaker and this own my own company and own my own business, mm-hmm. you know, and have a podcast and you know all this stuff. I don't. Yeah, you know, I think you, I think you're doing great with your business. Um, the gut health and the health and wellness is something that the name Americans really need to listen to and try to change the way of dieting and eating. Mm-hmm. And then also you coming in with the podcast is going to know the other side of you. So um, I think it's going to be great for you um, on that side. Um, so I think you're doing a really great job for our people. And Thank I you. I appreciate yes. that. Same sort of, for you. I mean, you know, you give us a space for, for this yeah. right here. And let us know uh, or let me know when the podcast comes up. Um, make sure that we put it on here and that we advertise it. And then we also put it on, on my social media platform. And, but you gotta keep us up to date when it comes out. Do you have any <laughs> kind of uh, idea when it was gonna co- when it's gonna come out? Well, I have a couple of rough drafts mm-hmm. <laughs> for my intro. Yeah, <laughs> intro part one and part two. Yeah, I think you know, but but part of that too kind of wants me to keep it that way, right? Keep it organic, you know, grassroots, mm-hmm. because that's relatable for us as Native Indigenous people. And so you're probably going to publish it this week or next week? Maybe next week. Oh, my goodness. Hold up, okay? (laughs) You didn't give me actual, like, time. Like, where do you see yourself? Like, in a week? A couple of weeks? (laughs) Well, I have to do it soon because my first workshop is in August, right? Right. So, yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You know me. Yeah. It could be it could be Monday, which is right. you know, in the two days, and mm-hmm. then I'd be like, Oh hey, Mateo, guess what? <laughs> well, first of all, I have to fine tune how to upload. I'm still learning yeah. the dynamics of the app, mm-hmm. the the software, you know, ed- edits and stuff, and thank you for all of your help and um showing us what what showing me what I need to do. Um, so I'm looking at, I, I would say at least two weeks out Okay. and I, and it really has to be done because of my schedule mm-hmm. and because of what, um, what's coming up for my business and stuff. I, I really don't want to start something and not be able to con- keep it consistent. Mm-hmm. Well, you so, definitely gonna, you definitely have help at home. I mean, you got a, a son there that's you know uh, our kids are very tech savvy with their phone um so they can do all kind of stuff my my son could do a music video with his phone you know they're but they won't they can't do it on a computer (laughs) but they could do it on their phone so if you need any help i'm sure yeah i'm sure your son can help you with whatever you need on that area you need help with that part of it is Mm -hmm. that intro music that we had discussed Mm -hmm. so stuff like that and so I'm running around. Um, I'm like, hey, maybe if I just sing something, you could like fix my voice. Right. Could you do that? Yeah. See, there we go. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, done. Well, thank you for your time. <laughs> and please let us know when your podcast comes out. 
and I'll put all your information on the episode, uh, your links. Uh, any links that you want me to put on there other than your website? Um, yeah, I might just my link tree. Okay. Because that gives on there. Um, the full um, social media platform where mm-hmm. you can find me anywhere and everywhere. Um, what I would appreciate is just um, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for um, your support and what uh, Fight for Our Existence um, provides for our people mm-hmm. and all that you do in the space. But yeah, just if just getting the word out, you know, our, our biggest uh, one of our biggest fundraisers is going to be our, our marathon that's coming up in November. And we're going to utilize all the different platforms. And likewise, since we we both have um, big presence on social media, anything that, you know, your podcast needs to promote, even other other businesses, right, Mm -hmm. Um, um, that you promote, just let me know, hey, can you throw this up there? No problem. Okay. Thank you very Um, much. Social media. um, I do on my website, I Mm -hmm. do have a, a weekly warrior. So, um, and we like to recognize someone uh, during the week. Okay. That's, you know, that needs some exposure, some support, whatever. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Don, well, thank you for your time. And then uh, we'll be waiting to hear from you from your podcast. I was going to say thank you and to make sure that you all have love and light. Okay. Thank you very much, Don. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you all for tuning in to the Fight for Existence podcast. If you guys want to keep up with the podcast in general, what you could do is follow the social media account. The Instagram account is going to be Fight for Our Existence. Again, that's Fight Number Four Our Existence. Go ahead and give that a follow. And if you guys have any questions for us or you guys would like to be on the podcast, in the Instagram, there's a link. Go ahead and click that. No matter what kind of platform you guys are listening to this podcast on, there's always that plus or that follow button. So go ahead and click that so you guys can get notifications when we upload our next episode. And if you guys are listening on Spotify, what you can do is go ahead and rate the show. And if you guys are only listening on Apple Podcasts, what you can also do is write a review for the show. Thank you all for tuning in to the Fight for Existence podcast, and we will talk to you next time.